environment with rising interest rates, normally you're supposed to stay away from higher yielding stocks like the utilities. Their yields become less attractive as rates rise and their stocks tend to get slammed. Yet, oddly, the utilities in particular have been holding up pretty well in recent weeks, even as the yield on the 10-year surged above 3% the other day. Just look at American Electric Power, AEP, the company that owns the largest power transmission network in the United States, along with some major power generation assets. They've been moving away from the heavily coal-based model, the one where they use cleaner energy sources, including a major wind farm project in Oklahoma that we got to ask about. This morning, AEP reported a two-cent earnings miss off a 98-cent basis, slightly better than expected revenues, and management reiterated its guidance. In response, the stock moved up nicely, and in fact, it's been gaining ground for the last 10 weeks or so. This despite the fact that AEP sports a 3.6% yield. you think this kind of thing would be going out of favor. Instead, it's hanging in there. So let's take a closer look with Nick Akins. He's the chairman and CEO of American Electric Power. Hear more about the quarter and his company's prospects. Mr. Akins, welcome back to Mad Money. Great to be with you again, Jim. Uh, it's great to see you, Nick. I've got to tell you, yeah. a lot of people wonder, well, hold it. How can those interest rates go up to 3%? And then I listen to you about your top 10 industrial sectors. They tell me maybe interest rates are going higher because business is pretty darn good. What do you think? Absolutely. Uh, we're seeing a really big turnaround here for the first time since 2011. We're seeing all of our sectors of the economy pick up. All of our companies are improving across the board in our 11 state jurisdiction, and all the customer classes are picking up as well. So, and again, it's the first time since 2011, the lowest unemployment rate since 2000, and the GDP in our service territory is, is going at 3.3% versus the U.S. at 2.9%. So, so we're seeing a broad, a broad gain here. Uh, a lot of people have been saying to me, you know what, Jim, they cut those taxes, didn't matter. But you cite the impact of tax reform as one of the reasons. Oh, absolutely. Tax reform has, a, has had an impact, uh, obviously, from an expansion standpoint, and certainly with, with uh, uh, oil prices being higher as well. You see the oil and gas sectors, primary metals, uh, those kinds of uh, uh, manufacturers are continuing to progress, and certainly tax reform helped them. So talk to me about the individuals, too, because you do mention that retail strong. And Amazon reported tonight, so when I hear retail strong, I often worry that, uh, that brick and mortar's got to be weak, and it's Amazon that's strong. But it seems like everybody's doing well. Yeah, we see the customer classes across the board. Retail is up 1.4%. Uh, certainly overall, our, our load is up 1.5%, and industrials are up 2.5%, so, uh, and you're seeing commercial growth as well. So across the board, uh, you're seeing the increases, and, and certainly from a customer standpoint, uh, you're, we're seeing customer counts improve and, and uh, across the board. So uh, great outcome. You know, Nick, when I f uh, follow your company, I think about the strength of the region and how great it is and how much you've been able to profit for your shareholders. The analysts tend to want to focus on wind catcher. And, and can you just give me yeah. some clarity on that? Because I know ultimately that's going to be fabulous for the rate base and, of course, for the environment. But these guys just are – that's all they seem to want to talk about. So can we put it to bed a little or say give it some clarity, <laughs> as you said in your release? Well, certainly we're hoping to get that clarity in the May-June time frame when the four states that are involved, Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas, and Oklahoma, are in the process of reviewing it. We get the approvals for that. It's a $4.5 billion transaction. Uh, and if you compare it against M&A, for example, it's $4.5 billion without a premium. So it's a great opportunity for the company. And what does it mean in terms of being able to produce power cheaply that you never thought could have happened, say, 10 years ago? Yeah, certainly has changed dramatically, particularly if you locate it in the right area. This wind power project is the largest project in the United States, uh, 2,000 megawatts of wind, 51 percent capacity factor, which means it's, the wind is blowing much of the time. So certainly it helps from an econ economic standpoint to have the scope and scale, but also the resource itself that's so prevalent in western Oklahoma. If you had to do it over again, is it easier to build now? or the, What were the mistakes that everyone seems so focused on? Well, certainly as you go look at, look at the size of this project, it really is being spread out among four different jurisdictions. But, but when you think about that scope and scale, it is a daunting uh, decision to make, and the commissions are making a lot of progress. We have settlements in Louisiana, Arkansas, and now a settlement in Oklahoma. So certainly it's been helpful uh, to move along that process, and they see the value and the benefits, particularly the benefits of a hedge against natural gas prices. 
Yeah, how much, uh, both as a utility uh, CEO, but also from your region, how much does it matter that we've had uh, deregulation going on since President Trump? Because I get the sense that deregulation has meant a lot to a lot of different industry groups in your area. Oh, I think it has. Uh, certainly the, the, the mood of the country, but also the ability to expand the capital being deployed, uh, certainly from a regulatory standpoint, uh, it really is uh, changed the nature of, of the positive and optimism that, that many of our customers have. And with that optimism comes growth and investment associated with it. And obviously, we're the beneficiary of that. And what's the strongest area of this country? Because it's going to be within your region, so you'll be able to tell us. Yeah, so, so obviously, uh, in our territory, the central Ohio area uh, is, is really growing very quickly. Obviously, the oil and gas territories in Texas as well. And these are areas where you're seeing deployment of technologies around uh, oil and gas activity, but also in terms of the urban setting with our Smart Cities project in Columbus. It's been very positive to, to drive investment and really focus on society uh, being in a much better place. All right, well, you're a godsend. I'm so tired of the negativity. It's good to hear that people are getting jobs, being put to work, and big projects are happening in this country. That's Nick Akins. He's the chairman and president and CEO of American Electric Power. Nick, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Look, it's still the best one. I recommend that every time. All it seems to happen is it goes higher. Man, money's back here for the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.